Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Quasar49 and welcome to my forever confusing clock tower. Bear with me, I'm still working on a name. If you're here, you're most likely wanting to know the answers to the mystery, or you just wanted to hear me talk. Either way, you're in for a treat, so let's get on to it. First off, a little bit of background. On June the 4th, 2018, a mysterious island and clock tower appeared outside of Vision Park. Players who noticed it began to venture out towards it, and eventually they would discover a locked door, a suspicious note, and of course, the derelict clock. Players and fans alike were baffled by this and began theorising as to what the meaning of this place could be. Skip to a few days later, and the note had suddenly changed. Now it was apparent that whatever the secret was could be found through following clues left around the theme park. And... all hell broke loose. <laughs> For just under a month, the community pulled together and went at this mystery with full force, trying to find every clue and noticing every singular detail that matched up with the clock tower. I'll go into my favourite theories in another video. But as the journey went on, sadly the trail went cold. There are 10 clues in total in the clock tower clue chase, and the infamous final clue, number 10, had everyone stumped. I feel pretty bad in a way, because while I never said that this was going to be easy, I did make the very last clue for the amazing theory lovers that reared their heads in the middle of it all. Players who picked apart every little detail before the clues even appeared in the park. But sadly, no one to my knowledge has been able to find out the code to the locked door. So that's what I'm here for. Buckle up guys, because this is the official video guide on how to solve the clock tower clue chase. First thing you'll need to do is go over to the island itself. You can do this if you have the VIP game pass and can access a speedboat. This hunt doesn't require a game pass by the way, you can do it with a friend who has it and go from there. Once you get over to the island you'll be greeted by a huge rusty door, a keypad and your first clue. Now before we get on to rushing through every clue, because I don't want this video to be hours long, the first thing you need to know about the clues is that the answer is always being told to you in the details. You need to pick a part keywords and then think about where they are telling you to go next. Some of the clues don't tell you to go to other places, they may tell you to do something, but we'll get onto that when it comes. For now, I will underline the keywords and tell you how they relate to the next clue. So, clue one. Upon your arrival, an agreement was made between body and rock held in due place. The tower of old, its voice silent now, can give you the key to an age lost to be found. But be warned, dear traveller, it will not be so smooth, as first you must venture into a web of untruths. Where metal now buckles and groans through the night, the power of this place still shines oh so bright. Soaring higher than ever before, in what was once the tallest of all, you shall find it upon entry, dust, rust, and mould. So, Key phrase time. Apart from all of my fancy rhyming, I have a total of four keywords for you in this clue, and they get smaller in number with every clue, making it harder the further you get. Let's put a counter on the screen to keep track of these from now on. First key phrase is, you must venture into a web of untruths. This tells you that the place you need to go to is full of lies. <laughs> You realised that it was all fake, and the ghosts were merely projections on invisible screens. Soon after, the hotel shut down, and many were outraged by the lies that were told. By the lies that were told. By the lies that were told. By the lies, lies, lies. Second key phrase is, where metal now buckles and groans through the night, which suggests that this place is old possibly abandoned, and you can actually hear the metal groaning when you go into this place. Third key phrase, 
soaring higher than ever before in what was once the tallest of all. Meaning this place is very tall, but not as tall as something else. Something must have taken that title from it recently. And the fourth and final key phrase, you shall find it upon entry, dust, rust, and mold. This tells you that what you need to look for is after you enter, possibly near some dust, rust, or mold. So the second clue is confirmed to be in the final hour. When you make your way over there, just enter through the entry teleport, like the key phrase said. Look for dust, rust, or mold? <laughs> Let's speed things up. Clue two. A seeker of thrilling heights spends time chasing their plight. Trapped and locked into bright pink bars, they swing close to heaven, yet never reach the stars. And after it spins, they won't know where they've been, but they'll do it all again for that power within. In that clue, we had a total of four key phrases, and in those, it tells you to go find your next clue around Rush, the big swinging arm thingy. Reset yourself, go to the staircase leading to the platform, and look underneath it. Now, this clue... It's... It's a little different. Clue 3. Nothing also leads to something. Now, this is one of those clues that doesn't spell it out for you. Instead, you have to do something. Ride Ops, you should get this one. Think about how you operate Rush. To start the ride, you need to make the platform underneath the arm disappear, making it nothing. What you need to do is go up onto the platform using the stairs, enter the ride operator area, and click the button hide. This will hide the platform. Then, look at the clue again from outside of the operator room, and you'll now be able to see the back of it, and it has a can of Coca-Cola. Making nothing lead to your next clue, which is something. Oh, for goodness sake, the counter broke. This hint may have been too obvious for it. Okay, one second. There we go. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, the can of Coke. That entire image tells you where to find the next clue. There's only one place where you can get Coca-Cola in the park, and that's from the 50s-style Triple Seven Diner, located in between the final hour and Mr. Smiley. Once you get there, look on top of the Coke machine, and you'll find... Illumination is your only key while in the house of mind trickery. Taking the right path may fog your vision, when going in backwards is your only decision. From clue four, things start getting a lot more confusing, so buckle up, okay? Here we have three key phrases, two of which are pretty difficult. Here it states that you need to go to the house of mind trickery. Mind trickery being another way of saying illusion. Taking the right path may fog your vision means that if you go through the attraction the right way, you won't find the clue. But if you try going in backwards, you will see it. From here, go around the side of the House of Illusion, which is just further up the path. Look through the exit point and you'll see clue 5. Now we're only halfway there, so as a reward for staying this long, please enjoy this intermission. Clue 5 states that we need to look to the screen, and again, this one is pretty obvious. All you need to do is make your way down to Mr. Smiley, Vision Park's famous hypnotic roller coaster, and take a seat. Once you're on the ride, you need to look for the next clue somewhere around the screens on the ride. There are two TV sets on this ride, one before the vertical lift hill and one at the halfway point. When you get to the halfway point, there's gonna be a lot to distract you. Audios, visuals, the fact that the car kind of leans to one side and can't possibly be safe. All of these things and more need to be ignored. Especially by health and safety, am I right? <laughs> Look to the screen and you'll see something that wasn't on the last one. Three numbers and a backwards letter. This is clue number six. The numbers two, five, and seven, and a backwards G. The backwards G is the only thing in this clue that tells you where to go next, so keep these in mind for after this ride. And by the way, hold on. After you somehow survive Mr. Smiley, go through the exit and you'll be dropped off in the mall. Now, take a look back at what you just wrote down. Three numbers and a backwards G. Where have you seen that backwards G before?
Exactly. Make your way over to Enigma, and don't worry, you don't have to ride it after Mr. Smiley. Enter the ride through the airlock, and you'll come to a code door on your left. Now, input the code 257, and we find clue 7. Props must be given for how far you've come, adding the clues one by one. But here is where things only go further. Outside of the norms you have tirelessly wandered. Follow your heart is all we can say, and we shall meet up with you in the future someday. Here we have only two key phrases, and now we've entered what I like to call... This means from now on the clues get extremely hard, require a keen eye for detail and brain for theories. So keep watching for the answers because we're almost there. When you enter this room, you'll notice that the back wall is made of glass. That is for a reason. When it says follow your heart, take a closer look. Now you need to exit the room using the same code as before and try to get over to the heart. This is where the first key phrase of Clue 7 comes in, where you need to go outside of the norms that you've tirelessly wandered. This means that you'll need to go outside of what you've been doing, which is walking around inside the park. With this clue, I am literally giving you permission to break the rules. Anyway, hop up the hill and jump over the fence. You'll then be able to get over to the heart. This is clue 8, a cogwheel. This is where the keen eye for detail really comes in. The clue chase has intentionally led you past this wheel before. It's telling you to go to cycle. Hop back over the fence, run over to cycle, and here we go! Clue number 9, the final written clue of the chase! If it rains inside, help you should seek, even if your surroundings appear to be bleak. This is the final clue that involves key phrases, but things only get more complex from here. The clue reads, if it rains inside. This relates to one of Vision Park's main attractions, the Asylum. There's a scene in the ride that involves a bathroom, where you get showered with dirty water as a little girl sings, it's raining, it's pouring. So what you need to do now is get on the ride, go up to that scene, and take a look around. <sighs> you know, I feel kind of bad. Before we get on to answer this clue, clue number 10, I think it's only fair that I talk about how this this one single solitary clue drove everyone mad. If you haven't heard or weren't there for it, then you'll you'll never understand how crazy it became. I'll do my best to sum it up for you. A big part of this chase was a competition. A competition that, if you won, you would get your name put in Vision Park on the Clock Tower Island as a reward for your hard work. But only 10 people could get that prize, and that was judged on the badge that you would receive when you got into the room on the island. Here's the rules to the competition. To have your chance at having your name in Vision Park, you need to record a video showing you working out the puzzle from beginning to end. Start from the first clue, which is on the island. You can do it with three other people at maximum. You must also show that the badge has not got any more than ten winners at the time of you recording the video. Show the game badges list to be able to check it. Put it on YouTube and let me know, and the winners will be announced on an official Vision Park video. Good luck! Clue 10. Stopped even the best teams dead in their tracks. Teams that worked out the mystery piece by piece in a day were halted by this one crazy clue. No one could get it. But some did come close. Some came so close that they were almost going to work it out, but they didn't account for one tiny detail. So they were also stumped. Eventually, by July 15th, the trail went completely cold. No new theories, nothing. 
even the teens that I saw making outrageous theories had gone silent. It was pretty strange. To feed the fire, I gave a hint. There are only so many, so you won't be lost, but take the helping hand before making a fuss. This went out to everyone. I really wanted you guys to find this, but I couldn't just give it away. I'd given the final key phrase, and it was up to the fans to settle this mystery once and for all. There were some, some who got into the room and got the badge, but it was unconfirmed if they knew the code or not. So with all that said, all the clues, every detail accounted for, explored and analyzed to the max, I'm about to reveal how to finally solve clue 10 of the Clock Tower Clue Chase. Hope you're ready for this. So Clue 9 states that you should seek help. Everyone already got this and noticed it. There was also a number 5 above the word. But very few ever noticed that the number was very specifically placed above the letter E. And here's where everything falls into place. You see, E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. Take that idea and then apply it to every other letter in the word help. H equals 8. L equals 12, P equals 16, and of course E equals 5. 8, 5, 12, 16. A four digit code. But we're not done yet. You remember when I said some actually got this and missed out on a detail? Well, if you remember, the detail is always in the key phrases, and my hint gave you those final words. There are only so many, so you won't be lost but take the helping hand before making a fuss. Meaning you also need to add on a hand. How many fingers are there on a hand? Five. So, the answer to clue 10, and the code for the island door, is... Five. Eight. Five. Twelve. Sixteen. And that's it. That's the answer to this almost two month long mystery. All wrapped up and finally finished for good. But Quasar, I hear you say. What about the competition? What happens now? Well, that's my final thing to say. If you're not interested in the competition or didn't take part, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But anyone who did, I think you should stick around for a minute. So, yeah, by watching this video or even just skipping to the final clue answer, you probably think that this was near impossible to beat. And it is very hard, I'll admit that. It took me four weeks to plan this out, write up the rules, build the island, stuff like that. So I didn't want to make it too easy. At the end of the day, the fun in mysteries is the chase. The unknown. Working out each part and then earning your reward is the most satisfying way to do it. Whether it takes days, weeks, or even months, that's always the best way to go about it. If you're frustrated and cheat to get the badge or fake something to get your name in the game, then I can understand that. Frustration is an extremely annoying thing, but you just have to want it. Just imagine, if you glitch inside the room or find another way to get the badge, would it really be that great? Just imagine the amazing excitement and thrill you'll feel after doing it properly. That's so much more valuable than a badge. It's something real. And so, when I look at those who did do it properly and didn't get their reward, those are the kind of people I want to have this prize. There was almost... No way anyone could have worked this out. And I know that. This wasn't... 
what you thought it was. This was more than a clue chase. This was more than what was inside that room, or the badge, or the competition. It wasn't any of those things, really. I wanted to see who would push the furthest, who would go at the clues non-stop with their friends for fun, not reward. To help others in the community by posting videos on how to get the clues, to come together and be a proper, strong community. So, Red X Gangsters, Mushy Teddy 24, Gigantic Monsters Out 1, The Gnome 88, Bear Eggs, Video Star 7, and Stagbury 10, you are those kind of people. Rewards never come easily, and this much is clear by now. But it was never about who got there first, but who carried others with them, who worked together and had fun doing it. The real reward isn't for getting into the room, it's for you, being you. And trust me, I've got a lot more than this up my sleeve. <laughs>